I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. I'm here today with Eric Jensen, a Great bespoke seat. tailor from New York, for the second fitting of my gray fresco suit that he's making for me. So, uh, Eric, so great to have you back in Glad Dallas. Glad to be here. Pleasure. Uh, thanks for coming. So, yeah. in the last video that we filmed uh, was the first fitting, right? Correct. Yeah, so what we did was the basically it's just the shell of the suit. Um, at this point now in the second fitting, we have much more that's finished. However, it's going to be able to show me more things that need to be adjusted in regards to the fit of the coat. Yeah, so the first was really just kind of validating the basic shape and pattern. And now you've actually put some structure into the jacket. Correct. Uh, it's got more shape, more work. It's got the inner linings, Correct. I guess all the canvassing. Yeah, all the canvassing, the pockets are in, uh, as well as the interior pockets. The lining is in for the most part. It's probably about 80% in. Mm -hmm. And then the sleeves are basted on, the sides are basted up, and then the collar is basted yeah. on as well. So where does this fitting fit kind of in the, the scope of your normal uh, process? For me, I don't know how, how it is for most other tailors. I think every tailor kind of works uh, in, on a system that works for them. Mm -hmm. For me, my second fittings show me the most. Okay. Um, so it really is where I start to hone the differences of the suit that's going to make it yours. Mm -hmm. Um, the first fitting, like you said, is, is there to adjust for balance, to make sure that we have uh, chest and, 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 and length and everything else correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, uh, so this is the second fitting, um, and you normally are, what, delivering in, what, three to four fittings? Yeah, for first client, it's, it's, we're erring, I err more on the three to four fittings. Again, it's really important that you and I are both happy in mm -hmm. the final phase. So whether I say a hard and fast rule of three or four fittings, but if we get to the third fitting and it's like, we're not there, then we need to take that time to keep going uh, and to make sure that, that we get the pattern correct because the next yeah. time, so that's gonna be yeah. beneficial for our process. Yeah. And so the next fitting, a third fitting, yeah. what would that look like? I mean, is it a finished jacket and you're just uh, adjusting for small yeah, details at so that point? Yeah, so if I'm happy with where we're at after this, then yes, that's what we're gonna do. It'll be um, pretty close to finished coat. We'll just make sure that we adjust for uh, sleeve length, um, for button position, and um, for trousers, making sure that we've got the correct length on the trousers mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Yeah, great. Well, I can't wait to put that suit on, so let me run and go try yeah. that on. Fantastic. So here I am back with the trousers on, and um, I have to say just walking over here, they feel awesome. Yeah, they're, uh, the rise looks beautiful. The room that we have given you in the hips, as well as in the legs, look beautiful. I thoroughly enjoy the, the shape that we've gotten in the front. Um, my only detail problem is just that we have a little bit of excess cloth here mm -hmm. that just needs to be um, taken care of. And that's not saying that we have to reduce the amount of cloth there. We just have to let the angle, change that angle just a little bit to, to, um, to be able to work with your hips. So we're going to let out in the fork mm -hmm. and a little bit of shifting of the angle of the seat. Okay. Now just talk me through a little bit in terms of kind of what you did. I mean, it's um, it's a really high rise. Yeah, I so. mean, it's super comfortable. Um, you know, single reverse pleat. I mean, it's um, a beautiful trouser. Yeah, I, I my maestro in Italy, the, this was the only way we, we were taught to cut trousers was at this height. And I feel like it just really does a beautiful job of making the body look perfectly um, proportionate. proportionate, exactly. Yeah. So it hits you right where it should. It's about at your navel, mm -hmm. um, which really breaks your body up into two perfect little, almost halves. Yeah. Um, and it also gives your legs a little of a, an elongation, mm -hmm. uh, which I really, really enjoy. You know, nowadays we have those lower rise uh, trousers that are all the fat now. Yeah. It really kind of makes people look like their torsos walking around yeah. on sticks. Well, and it, it, <laughs> especially if they don't have pleats, it can make them look pudgy. Yes, right? and that, that as well. And yeah. a pleat like this, so you still have a very trim trouser. I mean, in my opinion, this is not a full trouser. It's mm -hmm. not a skinny trouser, but it's still trim. Um, but you have a nice clean pleat. Um, it's giving you the room that you need where you need it then the comfortability, but it's not giving you weight where you don't yeah. need weight. I mean, it's not tight. I've got some room, yeah. you know, and I asked you to cut it a little bit loose because that's, I want to be able to wear these with braces. Exactly. And yeah. so we did that as well. We put the tabs mm -hmm. in the back, so they're fold away. Um, so when you're not wearing braces, they look like this. When you are wearing braces, they can come yeah. up and you can button to them. Yeah. And the trouser has nice structure to it too. It's not, you know, it doesn't feel flimsy in any way. No. Which I've seen on some trousers, even bespoke trousers. 
And um, you know, so I feel like it kind of holds me in. Uh, and you know, the uh, you know this fresco is a really heavyweight fresco. It feels bulletproof. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, we this is on the higher weight of the fresco range, so it's this is about 12 and a half, 13 ounce. Yeah. Um, but you'll still breathe really well in it, which mm -hmm. is a fantastic option as well. But yeah, yeah I think uh, I'm very happy with where we're at. Okay. At so, so uh, anything we need? So why not? Yeah, why can I mark? Yeah, please. Um, <clears throat> so we just need to release the fork. And then I don't, I don't want to mark length right now. I, maybe I do. But we don't have a mirror, but that's okay. Um, were you saying that you wanted cuff or no cuff? So I think we'll do cuff on these. Okay. And we'll do like, a, I think a nice two inch turn up. I like that. I think that's gonna be a very elegant look with this. And in regards to your length of your trousers, um, do you normally wear a shoe, um, like, are you planning on normally wearing a shoe like this in, in regards to the fact that it's a loafer? Or will you be wearing a um, more of a full coverage shoe? Well, uh, both. Okay. So yeah. then my other question is, sometimes when guys wear loafers, they don't want to see any of their sock. Mm -hmm. Do you not want to see any of your sock? In terms of, are we talking in about the break? In terms of the length and then the break, yeah. Well, I like a kind of a medium break. Okay. That helps. I've just made things for some clients who um, who ended up wearing loafers and didn't want to see any of their sock, and it's a it's a different kind of length to your trouser. I mean, is it the length or is it also how wide it's cut? It's going to be wide and and length. I mean, it's going to be about how much pool how much cloth pulls up. Mm -hmm. um, you don't you don't have a reference point right now, do you? I'm going to mark and pin these like this, and then you can look at them later. Because of the, the circumference, I don't want to give you too much length. Okay. I don't want too much pool down mm -hmm. there. So I'm giving you a medium to small break, probably more. Because it, are you going to cut this wider? No. For the circumference mm -hmm. of the bog? Yeah. No. Okay. I, I, I think this is a very elegant drape. I think mm -hmm. it has a nice clean line from hip to knee down to, to your, um, your hem opening. Mm -hmm. So for me, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make this larger. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like the taper or anything? Yeah, in terms of the taper. Okay, so um, anything else? I mean, I mean, it's a beautiful, I mean, I really like how this particular heavier weight cloth holds the crease. It's, and it's a beautiful sharp crease, you know, and it's, and it's a straight line down. Exactly. So it's a perfectly placed. It's, yeah, you know, that's, you know, that's one of the beautiful attractions of a pleat is when you do get that line right, um, that very nice clean straight line, uh, it just, in my opinion, it pales in comparison. Yeah. And in the, in the frescoes, you get a really, really clean, sharp, crisp crease mm -hmm. as well, and it holds it. So yeah. that's another reason why I really enjoy working with yeah. it. And it's opening a little bit, but that's more because of the body of the fabric. Yeah, so it's gonna open a little bit because it has more, more rigidity to the mm -hmm. cloth. So it doesn't die, it doesn't hit flat. Yeah. I, I, personally, I think that's very elegant. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think it's elegant because it adds a new, focal point of the trouser. Yeah, well it gives a little bit of three dimensionality to it. Exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. almost like the roll of your lapel does. Yeah. Well great, well now it's time for the jacket. Yeah, so let's, well, uh... let's see it. All right, so as I said, uh, the lining is at this point basted in. Um, we do have the lining in the um, sleeves free um, because it's not gonna be tacked down, it's not gonna be finished. This okay. is all just a, a kind of a work in progress still. Shoulders are basted, collars basted on, and the sides are basted as well. Mm -hmm. So this way I have more ability to adjust the coat while it's on you, as opposed to, you know, just kind of pinning and hoping. So we're gonna put one sleeve in, let me grab the other one. And you should be in. One second, sorry Kirby. I lost it. All right, you're good. Okay, wow. 
here we are. It's yeah. my favorite. I feel like I'm really wearing a jacket. Here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's coming together. It doesn't look just like a, uh, a shell, basically. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I can immediately feel the weight. Yes. I mean, uh, I mean, this is a, um, it's got body to it, yeah. which I like, which is a little bit, I mean, it kind of offsets, I guess, the soft structure yeah. that we've got a little bit of a heavier fabric. It's kind of, it works twofold. Um, I, I really like a soft coat. I also like it to have some structure to it. Um, so I like to use cloths that mm. have that. Uh, especially for someone like you who's gonna be, who does a lot of traveling, who does a lot of wearing of their suits, you want something that's gonna have length yeah. behind, of life behind it. Yeah. Um, so first thing that I always do is I wanna look at the coat unbuttoned. Okay. Uh, first I wanna just make sure we get everything lined up. Just so I can see. So we still have that beautiful lay. We still have the fronts coming together real nice mm -hmm. and clean. Um, they, they kiss. They pretty much almost slab overlap as well. Um, we have a little bit to adjust in regards to this shoulder, as well as this. But you have a nice, nice chest and a nice. Yeah, waist. I mean the arms hole, you know, feels they nice. They feel nice and nice. I and mean, fine. beautiful uh, roll yes. of lapel. And I was noticing whenever I put it on, I could kind of see you actually cut a, a nice belly. Into this. Oh yeah. So we had talked about that, I believe, yeah. earlier, and uh, you know, we kind of went back and forth on how to do that. But I, I think we really found an elegant line on that on that lapel. So you have a nice, beautiful belly and a nice. Uh, mm. And we're doing two button. Yeah, correct, two mm. button. Uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna look things over. Yeah. Kirby, if I pinch here and here, mm -hmm. um, do you feel restrictive if you pull forward? No. No? Okay. What are you looking for? Chalk. So you have a drop here. Mm -hmm. uh, so your, your shoulder is sloped. It's a little sloped more than the coat will allow. So it's creating just that little bit of bunch. I like draping the chest. Uh, so mm -hmm. I like you to have room and, and, and freedom of movement. It mm -hmm. also creates a better suppression. Mm -hmm. But right now we're just creating a little bit too much of a fold. So I just want to clear that. How much of that are you able to fix without having to redo the sleeve? Um, a bit. Yeah. I mean, not, not too much, because if you do too much, you're gonna have to cut down uh, the armhole. Mm -hmm. So for every amount that you shorten here, you usually have to shorten the armhole. Yeah. I use, or drop the armhole. Mm -hmm. I usually like a nice high and tight armhole. So mm -hmm. I try to get away with not dropping it as much as I can. Mm -hmm. However, on this side, we're gonna have to do drop it. And will you pull it in here at the armhole also to kind of smooth that out or will um, for that drape, for the most part, no. Um, I'm gonna check this and see if I can bring. Let me see. No, I like where that is.
there. Feel it? Does that feel? Mm-hmm. Definitely, I can feel it hugging the neck more. Yeah, you, it feels a little more it's snug around the collar. Yep. Is still collapsing. You can, does that feel pretty? No, well, it still feels all right. It's collapsing just a little, so we're gonna have to drop that. Mm -hmm. Touch. The joys of being fitted. <laughs> Hurry up and wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's come together on the collar. It feels much better. Yeah. Yeah, once we have to slope your shoulders far more than we did. And this shoulder right here is the one that slopes the most. The most, yeah. yeah. So you're low, you're low here on your but right. But both slope. But both slope. So if they're not sloped, and if the coat's not sloped enough with you, the collar tends to fall away. Okay. Um, and that's just because. How it works. Yeah, just how it works. So what was happening was it wasn't sitting as close to your neck as it should, and that's in regards to the slope. Yeah, the and other, that's one of the hallmarks of a of a nice bespoke jacket is that it's always going to move around and it stays it comes right back to yeah. the neck. Yep, and it's now it's it keeps doing that, so yeah. it, it looks a lot better. Um, this side, I'm not going to be able to do it as much as it should because of your armhole. Mm -hmm. um, so what what's happening right now is because I'm sloping the shoulder so much, mm -hmm. it's your armhole went from that wide down to like that. Okay. And your your arm needs more movement mm -hmm. than that. So it's causing these collapses okay. right But that's here. something you can fix whenever you take it back. Yeah, so when I take it back, I, I measure how much I've sloped the shoulder, mm -hmm. and then you take that, and you take the same amount, and you drop the armhole. Okay. The so basically, you're just taking a coat that's cut for the angle like this, and you're just cutting it like that, mm -hmm. and then you're just dropping the armhole for that. But right now, we have a much cleaner body in the front than mm -hmm. we did when we began. Yeah. Um, we still have a little bit of collapsing here and here, but again, that's because of the armhole. And so once we take care of that and remedy that, um, we'll be able to, yep. to get a cleaner fit on that. And talk about some of the other details of the jacket. I mean, anything else that you're oh, yeah. pointing so out? So there's a lot of things that are different in regards to who's cutting your coats. Mm -hmm. And I've had a couple conversations with clients in regards to this because it's almost like if you think about music, mm -hmm. for instance, um, everybody has a certain taste in music. It's kind of what defines you in a way. Um, you wouldn't go to a guy who's known for, you know, guitar riffs and ask him, you know, the, um, to do Bach for you, you know, mm -hmm. in the same way that you wouldn't do a, go to a composer who does Bach uh, and tell him to do, you know, a rap song for you. It's just, they're completely different pools of interest. Mm -hmm. It's all still music. It's all still beautiful. Yeah. But there's different pools of interest in each one. And I think Taylor's are very much that way. Uh, we all have a house style. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, I, I feel like a lot of tailors don't like that word. I really like that word. Yeah. Um, because I want to make what I enjoy. Yeah. And I want my client to enjoy what I make. want us to do. Yeah, to enjoy the same thing. But at the same time, if you don't like the music I'm playing, it's best if you don't come and hear me play. 
because yeah. you're never going to really enjoy it in the mm. same manner that someone who likes the music I play. Yeah. Will. Um, so in that regard, I cut a very Italian suit, you yeah. know, and, and it, it's what makes me happy. What, it's what I really enjoy. It's mm. like a, what I like to see. Um, and, and some people like that and some people don't, yeah. you know, it's kind of to, to do an old yeah. a weird adage. Dita Von Teese once said, you could be the most beautiful peach in the whole entire world, the most succulent, the most incredible peach. Some people don't like peaches. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and it's that kind of mentality. So my coats are Italian. We cut in two pieces. Um, so you were talking about this earlier. You were mm -hmm. talking about this front dart here. Mm -hmm. um, so that goes from chest all the way down to the bottom. And that's a very hallmark of an Italian, a Southern Italian suit. Okay. Um, the not the Fior, Fiorentinians who like Liberano, Liberano, mm. who you were asking about, usually won't cut with a front dart at all. Mm -hmm. So there'll be nothing here. There'll only be that one on the but side. But there's also no side panel. On this coat, on yes. This coat. On most Italian suits. Yeah. In fact, I, I don't, don't, don't want to ever say 100% because yeah. someone will always prove me wrong. Yeah. But I would go with 90% of Italian suits don't have side bodies. Yeah. So but they're contrasting it to like the British or the French. Exactly. The British or the French, and they're always cutting through pieces. So they wouldn't have this and particular Americans. dart here, no. but right here through, normally it's through, through the, the pocket. pocket. Correct. Yeah. So it's a it's a third panel. So there's your first panel here, mm -hmm. and then your side body, which is your, your second panel, mm -hmm. and then your back, back which is your third yeah. panel. Um, so those are the differences and the nuances between yeah. the coats. Um, but yeah, I, I'm influenced, I'm inspired by the Italian yeah. look. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's, that's how I yeah. And that's one of the interesting things about New York and really the world for that matter is there's a bunch of different tailors kind of all doing different styles. But as far as New York is concerned, really for the most part of America, oh. you're really the only one specializing in a bespoke Italian aesthetic. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's, you've got other bespoke tailors in New York that kind of pull more from the British uh, kind British of genre, American, you know, American, yeah. you know, kind of flavor of tailoring, slightly more structured, certain details like this, you know, not being a part of their house style. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you live in America or if you live in New York and you really want that kind of classical Italian uh, silhouette and style, I mean, you're really the only guy that I know of doing it bespoke. Yeah, that's correct. As far as I know as well, um, mm -hmm. in regards to to that, those defining characteristics that really, really set apart an Italian, especially a mid to Southern Italian, mm -hmm. Uh, look, that's, yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, as far as I know. I'm only one. And you can't group Italy as like the same country. No, no, no. You know, Southern Italy from Northern Italy is, you know, couldn't be any farther apart. No, no, exa exactly. And they have just a completely different mindset when it comes to tailoring. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Chris, who I apprenticed under, he was highly influenced by the Milanese tailoring. So there's a little more structure. There's a little more... Um, so it's finish almost. Finish, it's almost. like neater. It's yeah. like cleaner. Yeah, I, I don't want to say just, neater, yeah. but it's, uh, I get that because mm -hmm. like, I, I like the idea of the defect is the effect. Mm -hmm. I like the idea that elegance has that one thing that catches your eye mm -hmm. that maybe should or shouldn't be there. Uh, I really enjoy that. So I like I like how the Napoleons love the idea of handmade, where it shows that it's handmade because there is something that's just not quite right. Yeah. But it's that it's not not quite right, and it's abrasive to the eye. It's yeah. just not quite right, but it sings. Yeah. yeah. And, and th there's a beauty in yeah. that to me. Well, and it's not intentional. It's like it's not like they're intentionally putting, but, you know, things not right in sometimes there. You, sometimes they might. Sometimes <laughs> they do. Like, uh, uh, you know, if you've watched Omast, yeah. um, you know, some of the guys... Uh, one of the gentlemen, um, I can't remember which one, but he said, you know, sometimes I like to make a double breasted that just has a little bit of a, a problem to it. Just just to show that, you know, I know there's that little thing and, yeah. and, and it makes it that it's it's handmade and, and that kind of shows that handmade authenticity. Mm -hmm. the, the problem that I find with nowadays is there's so much emphasis on, on the machine and this perfectionness of yeah. the machine, and but it almost ends up dead. Yeah. And I always mm -hmm. want my suits to be alive. Yeah. I want the cloth to, to I want the yeah. suit to. I sing. call it the humanity of it. Exactly. I mean, like Robert, you, want, you, want exactly. A, you want a certain humanity in your garments that, um, that aren't perfect. I think in some ways it's the difference between Japanese shoemakers and British shoemakers. I mean, the Japanese are incredibly talented, you know, and they make perfect shoes. But at what point is it too perfect that it becomes sterile? Yeah. You know, not to say anything. I mean, the Japanese shoemakers are incredible. Yeah. You know, but... I think from a general conceptual standpoint, you know, if it's too perfect, then, you know, it's sterile. Like there's no, yeah, there's life, no life to it. There's no spirit. Mm. There's no essence. And you I, know, not to give excuse, not to give an excuse to something not being uh, made well yeah, or well there's done. A huge difference. Right. So it's two different <laughs> things. It's not like, well, this is an excuse for something not being done right yeah. or being done poorly. No, yes. it's still perfect. 
but you can't, it's not sterile. There's yeah, still life in it. Exactly. It's a, a, there's no excuse for sloppiness, yeah. you know, but there, there's a beauty and elegance in the, uh, the hand nature. And yeah. The hand effect. So what's next? I mean, so we've, you've gone through this. I mean, is there yeah. anything else you need to see? So, so right now, because this second fitting, we had to do so much adjustment, Um, and that's, Part of it is because of the differences that come when there is a second fitting. Mm -hmm. um, the other part is, you know, some things you just miss. Yeah. And, and that happens. And that's why there's the insurance of a second fitting. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like where we're at and I like where we're moving. Um, I will probably get to the next fitting as finished mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, when we do the, do the next fitting, we'll check on your sleeve length. Yeah. Um, and that's when we'll take more into account of that. Yeah. And then we'll we'll make the five. So at that point, you put in buttonholes and yeah. So we'll do the buttonholes. We'll talk about you know how many buttonholes you like on your sleeve. We'll talk about you know how you like when your arm is down, how mm -hmm. much of your cuff you like mm -hmm. showing. Um, we'll talk about you know the use of your watch and what types of shirts you mm -hmm. wear if you're always wearing. Again, shirt sleeve lengths of coat are highly determinative to the eye on the shirt sleeve length. Yeah. Um, so. I've measured guys sleeves length, sleeve lengths when they're wearing one shirt and then they wear the next shirt and, yeah. and they go, wait, this is too much shirt showing. But the sleeve is still in the same spot. It's the shirt sleeve that yeah. peaked out more Absolutely. or less. And so that's that's another conversation that needs to be had in regards yeah. to sleeve length. Luckily, my shirts are pretty consistent. Yeah, I would what, imagine. What about, that? I mean, just the drape of the shoulder and the rotation of the sleeve? Yeah, so for the most part, well, on the first fitting, I, I chose where your sleeve pitch was going mm -hmm. to be. And it stayed consistent. Okay. Um, so when we before we ripped the sleeves, mm -hmm. I had noticed that, and I liked where it was. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to keep it as where where it's been, mm -hmm. and I have that that number. Um, again, things are always kind of organic, and they're yeah. and they're kind of. Uh, the coat's always kind of settling and adjusting mm -hmm. and you're, you're settling and adjusting. Um, you know, when, when I measure you, I try to get you as comfortable as possible. Mm -hmm. And when I fit you, I try to get you as comfortable as possible, but I'll never get you at your most comfortable. Yeah. Um, so those types of things could, could, could adjust yeah. um, when we do the finished product. But again, if I'm not happy and you're not happy, things get changed. Yeah. So even though the sleeves will be sewn on the next time, yeah. if they're not right, then they're not right yeah. and we fix them. Well, and that's one of the beauties of, I think, developing a relationship with the tailor is that, you know, you need to wear and live in your garments, Definitely. you know, for, you know, you and the garment to kind of settle into one another. Definitely. And that's where, you know, the iterative process, you know, the longer you have that relationship, the better the work product becomes. Certainly. And we touched on this last time, and yeah. it's that idea of dating and marriage. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you date your tailor, things are great. But when you marry the tailor, that's when you really have fun. Develop the magic. Develop yeah. The magic. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Well, the suit fans feels fantastic. I mean, uh, I mean, I like the, you know, the weight of uh, the fabric. It, you know, it feels... Um, you know, really, I mean, it feels like it's got body to it, which I like. And yeah. so I can't wait to see this as a finished product. Yeah, it'll as be. really being kind of a hardy, uh, you know, tr kind of travel ready suit that, you know, will, will fold up nicely. And I love how the weight gives the fabric drape. Yeah, which it, it gives really it allows the beauty of fine tailoring to really be seen. Exactly. Uh, my other question I was just going to ask is how do you like the new shoulder pads? Because we haven't put a shoulder pad yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, as long as it looks good. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, to me, the shoulder pad is less of a, um, you know, it doesn't make me feel any different, right? As long as, you know, how does it look? Yeah, no, and, and that that's the main thing is to give you that comfort and ease ability, but also give you structure in the shoulder mm -hmm. without adding too much to yeah. it. So I, just looking at them right now, I just really kind of enjoy how they look. Um, yeah. But I, I think that you'll hopefully find that really, yeah. really comfortable as well. That'll probably be one of those things that you have to wear, yeah. wear it, you know, to really, after I have it on for a day or two, or I've traveled with it for a week. Exactly. Like, oh, I kind of like that. Yeah, and it won't have all these yeah. pins in. Yeah, <laughs> great. Well, Eric, hey, thanks for coming out. Always and, appreciate uh, it. Kirby. Can't wait to, to see the next step here, and I couldn't be any more happy with how this is going. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. I think we're moving in a good direction, and uh, I think we'll have a beautiful car. Yeah.